and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the healing of the nobleman's son. You will see how life in this fallen creation often leaves you stuck in the middle, but that Jesus came between you and the end our sins deserved, that you might turn to him in every need. To that end, I offer as sermon text the Apostles' Counsel to Timothy, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So far the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. Back when I used to work in the business world, the most frustrating work position I found myself in was middle management. In middle management, you make few actual decisions on your own. Now, everything important is determined well above your pay grade in fancy offices far away in places like Dallas or Atlanta. The choices made there often reflecting their distance from the actual work you carried out from day to day. Yet it was upon you in middle management to make it happen among the employees in your charge. Upon you to motivate employees, most of whom rarely lasted more than three months, into thinking the newest business model, the latest corporate campaign, was the best thing ever, uh, better than the last one, which had debuted just weeks prior, knowing full well another was right around the corner. Stuck in the middle, then, between those over you who ever had you chasing their wanton demands and those beneath you who seemed to have no sense of investment, little initiative, it was your responsibility to somehow bridge the gap. In our Gospel lesson today, we find a man stuck in such middle management malaise, the nobleman of Galilee. In the Greek language, his title, nobleman, means little king or under king. Nobleman was a mid-level position of authority beneath the actual king or Tetrarch over Galilee, Herod, which especially in this case meant the nobleman was no king at all. Herod was not the sit down and chit chat with you type of type of boss. Herod's decisions were notoriously rash and impulsive, no thought for practical follow through. He was a figurehead ruler from a family whose favorite executive power was to execute, who had no problem slaughtering toddlers or beheading a prophet. Their subjects were expendable, not one of Herod's servants indisposable. With no confidence of direction, then, no sense of investment, how could any employee of Herod's royal house have the job security of lasting even one month. Yet the nobleman's job in the middle, his job day in, day out, was to bridge the gap between a capricious king and subjects lacking motivation. The fatiguing effort to carry out and positively position Whatever Herod wanted done that day as the best thing ever 
even better than yesterday's whim. Uh, it's not just the corporate business model, though, nor the dysfunctional dynamics of Palestinian politics, where the hardworking soul can find yourself stuck in the middle. Such middle management positions are common to all lines of work. As you face regulations and stipulations well above your pay grade, which make no practical sense as to how your job actually functions, yet you must follow them and obey, and in turn need to motivate those you work with or who work for you as if these things are the best of ways. Motivate co-laborers who some days show little to no sense of investment or self-drive. If in today's labor force, you can find anyone willing to work. Stuck in the middle at home, intervening between children's competing squabbling demands, uh, motivating the household as a whole to get on board with a plan which seems important only to you. Or perhaps you consistently find yourself the mediator between a spouse and child incapable of plainly communicating with one another. In all matters of life, to your left you will find a neighbor full of big ideas, while to your right stands a neighbor completely lacking in follow-through, leaving you to bridge the gap. No wonder in life's darker moments the soul can reach the breaking point of questioning whether all these frustrations don't come from even higher up than we first believe. If it's not our God and his top-down decisions which are capricious, as if the plan sent your day one day to the next, is determined on a whim, which would explain the hopelessness which accompanies every case of being so stuck in the middle, for there is no escaping him. Which brings us back to the spiritual trial the nobleman faces today, of a God who from his high and lofty throne above, has chosen to have this nobleman deal with the imminent death of his son. All Herod could offer, if anything, would be some bereavement leaf. Go home while he still liveth, and watch him die. The nobleman's servants, knowing they could face termination any day themselves, what compassion could they muster at? Which is why the nobleman, having reached his breaking point, with this a problem no mere man can step in and solve, reaches out to Jesus for him to step in and bridge the gap instead. Jesus' initial response sounds as aloof as the nobleman's boss, except he sees signs and wonders he will not believe. And then, at first, what would have sounded like Herod's go home while he liveth and watch him die, go thy way, thy son liveth, except Jesus really means it. As the nobleman discovers when on his journey home, servants who previously lacked the fire to get up and do much of anything come running to meet him and eagerly report how his son indeed does live. And the nobleman himself believed and his whole house that our creator is not so out of touch after all, but had sent his son to touch his life and yours. It had been rumor that Jesus was just the kind of man he needed 
who could step in the middle and make anything operate with precision, which had drawn the nobleman to him in the first place. Having heard how Jesus had motivated servants at the wedding of Cana to go along with his big idea of serving the guests water, only to learn once the cups had been filled that Jesus' word made it wine. This is a man who could step in the middle and solve any dysfunction. even death. You see, that feeling of being stuck in the middle between those who demand of you and those who let you down, it's relative. For there are just as surely those who feel they can never please you, that you're the one who's failed to come through for them. Relative, because the scriptures teach that the sin common to us all is the real debility behind the broken model. Beneath the way we go about business as a whole. Which means when your God seems to be the Herod, when he seems to be the capricious king who sends your way that which makes no sense, it is our perspective which is flawed. Oh, he does make an impossible demand of you to be righteous in every single interaction of life. And lacking both the motivation and ability, it's a demand we sinners can in no wise meet. But this is the real dysfunctional dynamic Jesus steps in to resolve. And it is from this, his middle management position, of Savior, that everything else Jesus can make happen flows. It's a position which involved Jesus going to meet that nobleman's boss for himself, face to face, when abandoned by disciples who couldn't last one hour, Jesus appeared before Herod and endured the shame of his capriciousness. A king who, when Jesus refused to satisfy his impulsive demand for some miracle done by him, mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate to be sentenced to death. Where if Herod had actually been motivated enough to get up and follow Jesus, he would have seen for himself the miracle he was so desirous to see. For it was after appearing before Herod in shame that Jesus went to go meet our Maker and face the consequence of every demand you and I have refused to appease. Following through on the Father's big idea, that the Son would bridge the gap between you and your God, between your soul and the wrath our iniquity deserves, in order to earn you perfect success before the high and lofty throne of heaven above through means of a cross. As the Apostle declares, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Testified in due time as it is preached to you this day, that you have no capricious God, but an all-forgiving Savior, whose resurrection from the dead proclaims your ultimate end in him, and thus until that day, the promise that anything, anything he chooses to send your way must, must be good. 
For if something as seemingly senseless as Jesus' innocent suffering and death has given rise to your freedom from sin and hell, given rise to your eternal life, how could the very works that comes your way not also serve that glorious goal? In his good and perfect grace it does. As we see, what God ordains is always good. He never will deceive me. He leads me in his own right way, and never will he leave me. I take content what he hath sent, for someday I'll see clearly that he hath loved me dearly. Now the nobleman learns halfway home how with Jesus in the middle, how his word makes everything come together. And as you keep in God's word, he'll send you glimpses of the same, of promises fulfilled all around you until you reach your heavenly home. As through faith in the cross and empty tomb, you begin to grow in confidence that God's decisions for your life, though contrary to what you would have chosen, are truly for your best. As Jeremiah proclaims, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Thus, you may be bold enough in the midst of what might seem senseless to you to offer up a prayer far better than any corporate slogan. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. You are never left to try and mediate this veil of tears all on your own. Not when you keep the God-man in the middle of every matter of life. The Apostle teaches casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. For in Christ Jesus, every stop in the middle moment becomes transformed into divine service. The opportunity to be subject one to another, to be clothed yourself with humility, and by so doing, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Trusting his mighty hand to have placed you in the middle of every situation you find yourself to be the one between him and the soul about to discover what only Jesus can give and do. This is middle management in the past of senses. As between here and eternity, you get to watch each day his better plan unfold all about you and learn like the nobleman how there is simply no business as efficient as the kingdom of God. Now the peace that passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.